wasteland yes today we are making crash barriers now this is an old very old trick i can't remember for the life of me where i saw it so if you're the guy that posted it for the first time ever on facebook then credit goes to you random person <laughs> um, i know i've seen it on the gaslands facebook page but i can't remember who posted it so sorry about that all right so it's the oldest trick in the world we're using corrugated cardboard to create the curves that you get in you know your standard highway and motorway crash barriers you know the metal you know steel things that you see you know sometimes cars plow into well corrugated cardboard is great for that because it's already got that double curve which can be really tricky to do by hand with like plastic now, for whatever reason, when I was recording this, I found that the backing would come off really easy um, when I was testing it. But when I started recording, for whatever reason, it was just refusing. So an easy trick in order to make your life a bit simpler is to just cut out the actual width of the rails. Because you know that each one's going to have two of the curves on one side and one curve on the other, because that's how these barriers look. And what it does is it gives you just a smaller surface area to work with. You're not trying to rip off this single big bit and then only little bits are coming off. It's like, no, you, it's controlled. You can you can remove it a bit easier. I mean, I still split mine in half here during recording, but trust me, during testing, this worked 110%. So once you've got your barriers, as it were, made out of cardboard, you know, stack them up. It's good to keep them all together. And don't worry about the ones that you might rip or you've only got like little short bits. We can we can still use those, so do keep those. Okay, so the base for this, I'm going to be using some foam board. You know, this is your typical foam core stuff that you can find at any like pound shop or Dollar Tree or whatever you've got. So I'm sure you've got this stuff. And what you want to do is you want to cut it to be just a bit longer than the actual crash barrier. And I'd say about a centimetre wide, or like half an inch in sort of width, because they don't need to be super wide, because um, these are quite narrow things. It's more just enough space for it to stand up. And keep, you know, keep in mind, we're going to bevel the edges on these as well, so you've got to think about that. Okay, it's easy at this point to just take a pair of scissors, or at least with this foam board, yours, you know, may vary, and just cut the curve in. Some people like to do this with a knife. I find scissors just makes life really easy. And I'm going to be beveling this edge anyway, so it doesn't matter if it gets a bit squished. So taking a craft knife and cutting it around a 45 degree angle to make the bevel that goes all the way around. This is just to help the terrain sort of blend into the whatever surface you're putting it on. Um, if you if you don't want that effect, then just don't put a bevel on it or put like cuts and nicks in it to suggest that it's been crashed into a few times. Um, you know, maybe maybe this is on concrete foundations in your death arena. But uh, I'm doing this more as a, a typical abandoned highway looking thing. So, yeah, just 45 degree angle all the way around. You know, don't don't worry too much. This doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to be covering over all of this with sawdust and basing material. So, okay, so it should look something like this. And you can go around as well and take off any little bits of foam that maybe, you know, they just sort of, they ripped rather than cut when the knife went over it. And for the purposes of this video, I'm making around five of these barriers. Um, I think if you're going to make some crash barriers, do them in a batch. Like there's no point sitting down and making one at a time. Cause it, it, with the amount of steps that you're doing, you, you just go crazy. If you're going to if you're going to make some terrain, just do lots of it because you you can always use more terrain. And same again, you know, with these, we're just going around beveling the edges. And you can make some that are shorter and some that are longer. You know, any off-cut bits of foam that you get, keep, because you can create crash barriers that's just like a little end bit where it goes into the road. So here we are. Now, what we're going to do, because of how we're going to be mounting the crash barriers, you're going to need to remove the paper layer that's on this top surface. Don't remove the paper protective layer on the back you're going to want to leave that where it is um, just so that it's quite strong and rigid but on the top remove it because otherwise it's going to get in the way when we go to attach the rail 
So how are we going to make our rail? Well, with sprue, of course. So this is just a simple case of cutting off a bit that's, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd say about an inch and a half, maybe just, you know, a couple of inches in length. They don't need to be very long because these aren't going to be massively poking out the top of these crash barriers. But a little bit of it does go into the ground or the base. So when you've got your little sprue supports, you're going to need about 15 in total. If you're doing five crash barriers, you're going to need 15, three for each one. I mean, you can have two on one and three on another, but for the purposes of this video, 15 in total. And we're just going to cut the ends flat. So as you can see here, it just looks like a nice, you know, machine cut support. Like it's not, it's not gnarly from where the clippers have been at it. Now, for whatever reason, this is the best method I've found for attaching these into the foam, and that's using PVA glue and a grab adhesive, which in this case is just the super cheap stuff you can get at somewhere like Asda or Walmart. It's just like a cork that you can put on top. So you get your sprue, you jab it in and make a little hole or a little indent that it's going to sit in, and make sure you've done that for each of the supports. Then you want to take a bit of PVA glue and put that inside the little indents. And this will form the sort of the flexibility that it'll have while it's in there. Because um, if you make these things really rigid, they'll sort of, well, you run the risk of when you drop it, it's just going to snap. But don't get me wrong, this is the best I came up with right now. If you guys know a better way of attaching sprue to foam core, please let me know in the comments because stuff like super glue will just melt it. Something like plastic glue will just melt it. Something like a hot glue gun will just melt it. Um, PVA glue would take too long to dry and isn't sort of strong enough. It's flexible enough, but it's not strong enough. Um, and then the cork by itself is strong enough, but completely inflexible. And I found it would just snap straight off. Um, I mean, it would stay attached to the sprue nicely, but it wouldn't attach to the foam. So yeah, combination of the two. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, as as quick as this video may seem, it's like, what, 30 minutes long? Um, after I put the, you know, cork on all of these, the, the grab adhesive on all of these, I had to wait until the next day. I waited about, oh, I don't know, four or five hours. I had my dinner and then I carried on because I needed these things to be dried before I you know, before I continued. Because you run the risk of it just all falling out and, and not setting properly and then you're back at square one. So yeah, if you know a better alternative, please put it in the comments below. All right, okay, so moving back to our cardboard rails. So um, as I said, you wanna pair these up. Don't worry if they're damaged or ripped or not quite perfect because they're gonna be two together. It'll actually look quite good. It'll look a bit more authentic than if it was this perfectly flat, smooth surface. You see them in real life and they've got all sorts of ugly imperfections on the front and back of them. So, so yeah, simply enough, with the one that's gonna be the front, put the super glue on the back of it. And then the one that's gonna be the back, glue that to the front. <laughs> I think I think I've made that as sort of obscure and out there as possible, obtuse, obtuse as possible. But it is, it really is simple enough to put these together. Like it's just a bit of super glue down the, the hollow of the, the back of the barrier and then just sticking the other bit of cardboard in the gap, you know, to so that the two are stuck together. You know, you, you give them a bit of a squeeze with your fingers and, and it's fine. And they're really, really quick to put together. They're, those are the quickest bit of this entire operation. <laughs> All right, okay, so we've got our crash barrier here and we've got our base. But just before we put it on the base, we're gonna to wanna to clean up the edges of this crash barrier. Because if you see them in real life, they tend to have a pretty uniform shape. Now we can get away with a lot of things as gas landers, you know, because we can say, well, you know, a car went into it or someone used it for cover. So that's why it's got these great big holes in it or a big dent. Um, but, you know, if you were doing this for a professional, you know, railway modeling, I'm sure these would have to be perfect, but, you know, that's not us. So just give them a trim and then glue them straight on, straight in place. 
and we're kind of using the rail to sort of keep the foam straight. I mean, you could use a bit of mounting board or a bit of cardboard on the back to to straighten out the foam and just make sure it doesn't curl up, but super glue works fine. So here we go. So we've glued it, glued all five of them in place, and they're looking pretty good. So now we move on to the next step, which is applying sawdust. And just like with attaching the sprue supports to the foam, putting sawdust or whatever basing material you like on this is the next really long part because you've just got to wait for it to dry. I mean, I, I wish I knew a technique that was faster um, for attaching the sprue to the foam, and I wish I knew a technique that was faster for uh, attaching texture. I mean, I've used the Games Workshop texture paints before, and those are pretty quick, but... At the same time, those are expensive, whereas sawdust and PVA glue is dirt cheap. I know you can get like higher quality glues like Gorilla Glue, so that could speed up drying time. But you know, if there was a, a quick and easy glue that would work on foam without melting it, by all means, let me know. Okay, so here we are with the five all nicely sawdusted up now. So at this point, we've pretty much completed all of our pre-paint steps. You know, these are looking like crash barriers. If you wanted to go the extra mile and add more detail to them, by all means, take some plastic rod, cut some little discs off, and make it look like the actual rail's been bolted onto the supports. That'd be really cool. But we're just going to move straight on to painting now for this tutorial. And it's just a 50-50 mix of black poster paint or water-based paint and PVA glue. And we're just going over the sawdust and making sure that that stays down. And we're doing that to the cardboard rails as well. You know, just coat the entire thing. But my advice, try not to get any paint on the bottom. Because if you put that down on you know, a paper surface, it's just going to stick. And when you go to lift it up, there's a chance you'll just rip it straight off. So we've applied a bit of a sealant as it were with the PVA and black paint. Now we're actually looking into putting a base coat on all of it which in this case we're just going to do with cheap brown craft store paints and don't worry about being neat we want to cover the entire thing here so just the entire piece just splodge that brown paint on get it done so we can move on to the next step. And This is the thing like once you start painting these it will just fly by, but it's the drying time of assembling that slowed this project down. I thought I could get this done in a day, but that drying time really does hit it hard. Okay, so moving along, we're going to start painting this to actually look like a piece of terrain now. So a bit of the old bolt gun metal on the uh, on, on the rails to make them look metal. Wow, no, this is Citadel miniature paints. Uh, lead belcher, I think you'll find as the base base metal paint lead belcher. Um, but I, I'll just call it bolt gun metal because that's what it is. But you don't want to get any of it on the base. You don't want to get it on the on the sawdust. That you know you want to try and keep that as brown as possible. To add a bit of life to the metal, we're going to mix up a bit of a rusty, reddy, yellowy orange here. To just dab on this isn't going to be an incredibly thick layer so just get a little bit on your brush or in, in this case quite a large brush and we're going to be attacking this as though where the you know this this is where the rust would have naturally settled so on top of the rail in the middle of the rail you know any raised surface that would have collected water or been particularly caught by the wind Round the back is perfect for this because there's lots of, you know, big, big, uh, big cavernous areas that could really have caught a lot of, a lot of water and moisture that could have caused the oxidization. I mean, I know that um, with crash barriers, they're made out of stainless steel, so typically they wouldn't rust. But yeah, you know, it's the wasteland; everything's a bit rough. I'm gonna go in with a brown just to go over the areas. Uh, around the base where a bit of metal paint may have gotten and you can see that here if we compare it to one below that hasn't had any brown painted on. It's good to do a bit of clean up just before we go on to the next step. 
which is applying a black wash. So, same as with this technique, there are 101 videos on YouTube and articles online on how to make a black wash. This is basically the cheap and nasty version of, like, a Citadel's Norn Oil or something like that. Um, but if you've never ever seen a black wash before in your life and you're going, what is this revelation? Um, this is basically black poster paint, water, and a bit of washing up liquid to help... It you know, break up surface tension when you brush it on. I don't particularly understand it, but that's how it works. Um, you can make it really simply yourself. Uh, this is a technique as old as time, so by all means, just look up black wash. After you've done that, we're going to use a bit of the old beige, or in this case, a stab de bone, and we're going to um, we're going to dry brush the base. Well, it's not it's not really a dry brush. It's more like a a light brush um, because we've not completely removed all the paint from the bush at this point um, because we do want quite a healthy coverage over the brown but as you can see already it's looking way more finished than uh, than if that was just a, a solid brown or a solid grey colour for a base so look at that now something I want to point out here is that at this point you could quite happily say this is done I've finished my crash barrier. You know, you've done that times five. Let's throw them on the tabletop and see what they look like. And they look perfectly fine. You know, this looks great. You could put a, you know, a matte varnish on these and away you go. Hell, you don't even need to do that. You can just put them straight onto a tabletop. However, on this channel, we like to uh, go the extra mile. So using some storm host silver or just, you know, a lighter silver than the one you used previously, we're going to attack it on top. We're going to sort of lightly brush on top of the, the metal parts, you know, to bring back more of that stainless steel look. Um, and I've got to apologize. I'm using a new camera here. The lighting is natural daylighting as well as, you know, lamps. So it's all over the place. But hopefully you should be able to see how this really helps sort of bring some vibrancy back to the to the crash barrier. That the black wash really did a great job on, but it really darkened it. So here you go. So below you've got the one that we've just lightened and what it looked like before above. Okay, so to lighten the base, we're going to do basically the same thing. So instead of beige by itself, we're going to mix a bit of white to that beige, lighten it. And, and again, this isn't a dry brush. This is more of a light brush. We're just going to remove not not too much paint from the brush before we then start to just drag it over the top of the surface and just pick up those highlights pick up any little bits that are just stood above the shadows and just help to just take these bits of terrain just that little bit further I mean have fun with it you know this is at the end of the day if you're making this for your own collection you don't want it to just be something that you've thrown together in five minutes like ah yeah that'll do who cares because you'll look back on it when you're playing a game or when you're looking at your photos and you go, oh, I could have could have taken an extra, you know, five minutes and, and made this look really good. So what else can you do? Well, you'll get some cases where maybe as you put the sawdust down or you were applying that PVA black sealant layer, that some of the sawdust will have been pulled away from the phone call. And that's fine. We can use that in our favor by making it look like that base like concrete support structure has been shown like maybe a, some car sort of clipped it with a wheel arch and and a big cloud of dust came up and then you know the raw stone was shown underneath so mixing up some gray paint we can go over that and this just brings in a whole new texture to the model because i often find this that if you have just a single color base like just brown beige done or gray white done then you don't you know it all just blurs together you don't really get to see all the potential of that model especially if now you highlight it with some white which again you know it's not a heavily loaded brush we've removed a lot of white from the you know, a lot of paint from the brush but there you go picking up those those edges and all of a sudden doesn't that look really good? Doesn't that look like it's had just a bit more time put into it? And it's really easy. It's just putting more paint on it. All right, so you get some bits and you go, well, I haven't got any 
you know, rocks I want to put on there or paint to, you know, show through. So what about, you know, utilizing some of the holes and weird gaps that, that can appear during the creation process? Well, if you use a bit of black paint and really remove a lot of paint from the brush, you can create these sort of scorch marks in the metal and in the earth and make it look like maybe someone was using that barrier for cover and like a stray rocket or a stray bullet hit that and you know create a big big hole there, a big crater. You know. But aside from you know some foliage or some dry grass looking techniques using old brushes, that pretty much is it. And here we are with the finished thing. And I gotta say, I've I've really enjoyed making these. I mean, as I said, if you guys know quicker ways, you know, to attach things to foam core, please let me know. Because yeah, it can be it can be pretty rough when you're getting really into the mood with your model making and then all of a sudden you gotta stop until later on in the evening because you're waiting for glue to dry. But you can see with just these real simple steps and techniques you can have some crash barriers for your games of well any post-apocalyptic game i mean you could use these in regular 28 millimeter scale you know like warhammer or necromunda or judge dread if it's a game that takes place either in modern day or you know futuristic then you can throw these on the table and it's a bit of scatter terrain but uh yeah i mean i gotta say i have i've had a lot of fun with these and they open the door up to a lot of potential additions as well like because you might look at these and go oh well in a mad max universe wouldn't they just tear all these up and use them as armor on their cars well yes but then again mad max isn't the most super realistic of, of settings either so there is freedom to have these things placed around and maybe armored up or covered in graffiti and the same techniques can be applied to making curved or angled pieces i mean you just need to make some cuts to help that inner guiding rail help the outer guiding rail make the curve if that makes sense and like i said you can use the offcuts to make little itty bitty little sort of ends to the rails and those can always be useful because more often than not you look at a table and you'll have all the nice big bits of terrain but you haven't got any little bits that help break up line of sight so yeah, there it is, how to make crash barriers. <laughs> My first tutorial of 2020, and it's how to make crash barriers. <laughs> well, believe me, if you love this, you're going to love the uh, next video I've got coming out, uh, terrain building. But uh, i, I got to say, I hope that you guys take the inspiration to make some of your own, and uh, I will see you all in the next video. Thank you for watching Wastelanders. And before I go, before we end the episode, may I just say a gigantic thank you to all of the sponsors of this fine channel. You know, good old Mad Car Green Miniatures, Camsel Designs. I'm part of the uh, I'm part of the Gaslands UK Facebook page. If you didn't know, so uh, you know, got a bit of news about that coming up in a minute, and also. A massive thank you to V2A, the music of the apocalypse, the world's greatest wasteland band that provide the music for this fine channel. But yes, what about other news? Well, as I record this, it is the 5th of February 2020, Wednesday the 5th, 2020. So what does that mean? It means that, yes, we have a brand new Car of the Month competition over at Gaslands UK. So what you need to do is go straight to Gaslands UK Facebook page, check it out. At the time of recording, you have four weeks left. Four weeks left. So much time. So much time to do the challenge. And what is the challenge this time around? Well, Halen Games has set the challenge and it is to make a diorama. There is some fantastic prize support for this month's competition with prize vouchers for first, second and third place of 25, 15 and 10 pounds. So Hale and Terrain, thank you so much, you guys. They do some amazing 28mm terrain, which is funny because that's what this video was all about.
So if you want to enter, check out Gaslands UK's Facebook page and look at building yourself a diorama. You never know. Maybe something that you saw here today might inspire you. You know, maybe a car crashing through a barrier. That'd be pretty cool. All right. Thank you for listening, Wasteland, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.